All right. Yes. So as I think you all know, we're you're here for an introduction to version control with Git. Um, so you're going to hear me speaking for a little bit of time, probably about uh, 15 minutes or so. We'll have a few pauses along the way. Um, and then we'll get started with our interactive part. We want um, to make sure we prioritize a lot of time for you to really have a go at, at playing around with GitHub desktop, but we'll just make sure that everyone's on the same page first, basically. Okay. So to, uh, to that point, um, we just want to pause before we get stuck into the sort of uh, theory and content and check that everyone here has managed to install Git and GitHub desktop. So basically that we're going to pause here because if you had any problems with this, please let us know now sort of in the chat and the helpers could go in a breakout room with you um, to make sure that uh, you have that installed. So I'll just leave this up for a moment just to check everyone can confirm that, right? So we need GitHub desktop installed locally. And then there were three tutorial files that Arini attached to an email, but you can also download from the, the GitHub um, AMRSF uh, repo as well. So I'll just wait for a moment just to sort of check if we hear that from anyone, but hopefully. Okay, I think we might be all right not seeing anything. Okay, so I think I'm gonna continue on, but if um, you did have an issue, just um, ping in the chat and then, you know, one of the helpers can sort of um, work that out with you, but just so that we can kind of keep a bit to a good time, I'll, I'll con continue on. But that's really good because hopefully that means everyone <laughs> has actually done it. So that's great. Awesome. Okay. Um, so briefly, we wanted to, I wanted to give an overview uh, to myself and my background, because I think I've met quite a lot of you, but um, perhaps not all of you, and also not necessarily in this context of, of teaching you. Um, so I'll give you a little overview of who, who I am and sort of my experience with version control. Um, if some of these things don't um, make sense yet, hopefully they will at the end of the lesson, but essentially... Uh, my background is in psychology and I did various different kind of research assistant roles. Um, and then I did a PhD in neuroscience specializing in neuroimaging. And sort of at that point, I did only really use GitHub to use other people's data and um, analysis code and sort of to keep track of what code versions I was using. It was sort of quite basic. Um, during my postdoctoral research fellowship, I really started to use Git, um, GitHub more regularly, um, mostly just to work with myself really. Uh, which was pretty much what we're going to be doing today. Um, but then I sort of helped the small research lab that I was involved in sort of set up a GitHub workflow and sort of started my journey into kind of um, contributing to open science GitHub projects, started to realize it was a good idea to share my code alongside research publications, even though that's terrifying, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so currently I'm a data wrangler at the Alan Turing Institute, as I think most of you know. Um, and I think a new thing for this, this role is using GitHub for project management. That was very new to me. Um, so, you know, there's always more to learn. I'm definitely still learning about that. Um, but that just gives you an idea of, of sort of my route into it. And everybody's route is different as well. So just, just one example. I don't know if we want to introduce the helpers at this stage, or shall I just kind of keep on going? Um, we've got the HackMD, so perhaps we're okay. Yeah, Paula, if you want to say a couple of words, I think people have heard me talk enough. Um, <laughs> you can just say hello. And from. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, I'm Paula. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Edinburgh. I'm a computer scientist as a background. So like my experience with uh, GitHub is mostly you know, to the versioning of the, the code that I was developing for my projects. Thank you. And I don't know if at all you want, I think, I think you're here as a, as a helper. So if you wanted to say. Um, yeah, uh, I think I've met also most of you. I am Batul Marzouk. I am research project manager for the RSF. I was trained as a computational biologist. So I did my PhD in um, bioinformatics and I'm based in Liverpool. And it's lovely meeting you all. That's pretty much me. Right. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, all right. Sorry, just ping me if I've missed anyone. Okay, um, right. So 
let's just think about what we're actually going to cover today. So the, the learning objectives. Um, hopefully this looks somewhat familiar from some things you've been, uh, you've been given. Um, so we're going to understand what version control is. We're going to understand why version control is useful. Then we're going to understand what Git is. We're going to understand where can we use Git. Um, then we're going to try to think about some of these words uh, that come up in a Git context. Um, I won't read them all out now, but these will um, become familiar as we go on. And then we're going to be able to apply these words, these commands, if you like, uh, within a Git GUI, uh, a graphical user interface, to version control your files. So that's sort of our, our goal for today. So hopefully we can, we can achieve those things. OK, so the first section um, that I'm just going to go over now, sort of the main section of the talk, is just some theory and background. So just as a reminder, this is very much designed as an introduction to version control. So if you know some of this already, that's really great. If you're already uh, convinced that it's a good idea, that's really great too. But we have sort of introduced, tried to um, uh, kind of design this to, to make sure we, we can kind of cover people, complete beginners, basically. So uh, yeah, please bear with me if it's a little bit, a uh, little bit introductory. <laughs> Okay, so what is version control? Um, so version control is an approach to recording changes in a file or a set of files over time. Um, so that might be you and your collaborators working on that. And then that means you can track the history, you can review any changes, and you can also go back to earlier versions. So as you can see from this fun picture here, there's lots of different ways we can sort of approach doing version control. And it is kind of quite challenging if you were to just make up a system on your own. So fortunately, we, we do have some systems we can, we can borrow from. So in the broadest possible sense, we'll, hopefully you'll see a bit more details as, as we go along, why might we want to use version control? So it, it's a great data management and docu documentation tool um, it lets you work with the latest version of a file. Uh, you can back up previous versions of files. You can save your edit history, and that means it's clear what you did, and you have the option to re revert back then. You can test out new features, um, and you, you can collaborate with others and manage projects. So that's sort of like the main reasons why we want to use it. But when you start to try to think about this, um, there are lots of challenges, and I'm sure we've all been in this situation with file naming that starts to not make any sense as, as sort of time goes on. Um, and this is a form of version control, which we'll touch upon in a minute. But there's so many different ways and there's so many challenges when it comes to big projects with lots of people being involved. I'm going to just dwell on those challenges just for a moment more, just in case people uh, haven't got the point yet. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move quite quickly on to the, the solutions. So please bear with me that this slide is meant to be horrible to look at, um, and I'm sorry about that, but this is just um, uh, uh, a reason for, uh, yeah, just to sort of demonstrate what we're looking at here. So you might have this, this person one, this researcher, and they're developing, um, they're, they're working on a script to analyze their data. It doesn't matter what this is, they've, they've written some code. Normally you don't get it right the first time, right? So you go through a few different versions, you, you make a version two, you make a version three. But then you realize at one point that you wanna test a feature out, you wanna test a new feature. So you, you start to add these little labels to your files like test new feature, it takes you a while to test this feature and, and starts to become unclear what you actually should call these files. So that gets very messy. Then you realize you need help with this. So person two comes in, researcher two, if you like, and it help, they help you with testing this new feature. And you know, more files are created, really unclear what we, should, what we should name them. Then person three has a lot of ideas. They have a lot of really useful ideas, but they don't edit the files directly. They just sort of contribute to this process. And what happens is that this feeds into creating a script three. And then once you realize that this is becoming a bit more complicated, you start to, person one, two, and three starts to realize that we might need some of these meta documents, right? Which a lot of the time that's, you want to track the project history. You want to know what the next steps are. You want to keep track of the resources and the references and the you know citations that you've used. And you've also noticed that there are some bugs in your code, but some of them you can ignore for a moment while you develop something, but you want to keep track of that. So this is all a bit overwhelming, but at the same time, I think you all probably will know that um, 
you know, there's many more people normally involved in your projects than four. So anyway, yeah, sorry, that's person four. <laughs> uh, so, you know, time will pass and you'll ask yourself questions like, where is my latest version of that script? When did I incorporate that new feature? Who made that change? Someone asks you to run uh, the version two script and you don't have it anymore, that kind of thing. And, you know, I made one more horrible slide just to point out that actually there's many more people involved in projects than four people. There's many more documents than I had on the initial screen. And so it really does get quite overwhelming with these large projects, which I think we're all a part of very large projects and with a lot of people involved. But that's just enough on the, the problems. Let's actually talk about some of the solutions um, and uh, make sure that we, we move on to that soon. Okay. So some of the solutions to, to those version controlling problems. I mean, some of them I've been talking about without explicitly sort of introducing, but that's because I think most of us would be familiar with this very straightforward way to version files, right? So by adding versions or explanatory labels to a file name, so like one, two, three, or putting sort of initials at the end of a file, that is fine. That is version control. You're probably already doing that, which is great. And sometimes that is sufficient. Um, but normally, if you've got one file, if you've got one user, that might be okay, but it does get messy with lots of files and lots of users, and that's where we can turn to more version control systems, and, and this is where Git will come in. But let's just reflect a little bit on, on sort of what these systems do and um, what they do by tracking a ver versions in a single file. So in this top example here, we tracked um, within multiple files. Every time you make a change, you've made a new file, you've called it a new thing. Well, actually a lot of software doesn't work that way with version control. What it does, it records the changes to the file. It doesn't save a new file. Uh, there are some basic examples of this, like Google Drive and Dropbox and Overleaf that are already doing this for you. You might have noticed you can sort of go back to previous versions. But there are more advanced um, ways of doing that as well. So things like subversion and Git, which you've heard that we're going to talk about in a minute. So let's just, um, uh, you know, reflect a little bit on that versions in a single file concept. So when you sort of have a linear workflow, so this is what this sort of gray line is, is suggesting. We have a linear workflow here. We don't always, but in this example, we, we have. Um, a version control system is tracking uh, what you're doing, what you're changing at certain time points. And so like in these little nodes here. Um, and so it might track what you've added, an addition. It might track if you've deleted something or you've edited an existing content. Uh, content. And then these blue arrows um, are basically telling us that we can go um, we can move along this timeline, this linear timeline, basically, because you've recorded what changes you've made. It means you can go back to a previous version. You could maybe just go back and have a look at it, or you could revert your whole sort of workflow back to that version if you, if you wanted to. So I hope that makes sense that we're sort of basically, we are saving the changes to a file. We're not saving a new file like every time. Okay. So, um, we're a little bit more on this sort of version control system concept. It's sometimes called source code management, but I think that's maybe perhaps slightly less common. Um, so what do we want from a system? If we, if we need a version control system, what do we want? Well, when we edit a file, we want to record the content of the edit, uh, when it was edited, why it was edited, and who edited it. And basically what that will do is you'll have a snapshot of your project and you'll have a unique code that will um, be matched to those four properties here that I just said about. And I've said this already, but basically a new file isn't saved, only the changes made to the file. Um, and then what this means is that revisions at each snapshot or each save point, if you like, can be compared, restored, and sometimes merged as well. Okay, so let's move on to actually talking about Git. Uh, so I've sort of been talking to you a bit more about version control in general, but we are gonna be using Git, which is one version control um, system. So Git is a distributed version control system. And what distributed means is that multiple people can work on the same files at the same time, and that it has mechanisms for how to merge people's work together. So that's different to being centralized. That's why you hear it being called distributed. 
So there are many others, but Git is the most widely used. Um, it was created by the Linux development community in 2005. It's software. So if you're going like, what is it? Is it, is it a set of principles? No, it is software. Um, it's mostly written in C. You do not need to know C in order to use Git. I do not know how to, I do not know C. Um, but it, it just to contextualize it, it is a piece of software. Um, it has some selling points compared to some other pieces of software that do the similar things. It's free, it's fast, it's open source. So we like that. Uh, I already mentioned about distributed. Um, most operations only need local files and we will only be using local files today. So that might be a bit different to what you're used to with GitHub. Um, history of changes, who, when, why, what. Um, you can retrieve a previous workflow. And then it's a foundation to the to the collaborative tools that we you know that you may have heard of that we'll go on to use in the in this lesson series as well. If you haven't, that's totally fine. So GitLab and GitHub are collaboration tools, and Git is the foundation of them. Um, so yeah, it takes a snapshot of your project when you choose, and it compares that to a previous snapshot or a save point, and it asks you to record why are you making a change. So that's sort of the fundamentals of what Git is. Now, I think I wanted to just pause here and acknowledge that it's a very funny name. <laughs> and I think the first time I started using it, I was like, why is it called that? And I think, you know, you're going to have to get used to saying Git a lot, which is which is a bit silly. Um, so I'll just touch on this very briefly. It was named by the, the main developer, um, Linus, Linus Torvalds. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, when he wrote the first version, he's known for creation of the Linux kernel and he's Known to, say, known to have said, I'm an egotistical bastard and I name all my projects after myself. So that's quite fun. Um, but in the readme file um, on GitHub, <laughs> apparently Git can mean many different things depending on your mood. And if you, uh, you want, want to check it out later, please do. You can have multiple reflections on maybe why it's called Git because this, this um, quote here is just one reflection on why it's called Git. So there you go, just a bit of a side. Okay, so sort of coming to the end of this section then, um, Git is a free version control system that lets you manage and keep track of your file history and retrieve previous workflows locally on your computer. So you might be thinking, how is that different to GitHub? So GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service for sharing projects you are tracking with Git. And this will make more sense, I promise, as we go through but it's GitHub is really focused on collaborating with others. And you will do that in lesson two and in lesson three, I think. Um, and it, but you can use it for yourself for backups as well. But I just sort of wanted to make that distinction and I'm sort of ha happy to clarify a little bit more as the lessons go on if people are still a bit confused. So yeah, we're, we're close to the break actually, or close to the pause point until we move to the, the interactive part. I haven't got much more, but... Um, I want to go over if, so we've decided we want to use Git, um, what options do we have? How, how, do we, how can we actually use it? So there are many, many options. Um, you can use it via the command line or the terminal. Um, we won't be covering that today, but if you are comfortable with the command line, we have actually shared some tutorials and cheat sheets, cheat sheets is fun to say, um, for, for later. And so you can actually replicate what we do in the GUI. So later we're going to be clicking around in the GUI. We have actually shared some um, command line alternatives. So if you're interested in looking at that in your own time, you, you'd be welcome to. And there's also a lot of resources online. You can um, interact with Git um, via extensions to existing software that you have. So your favorite text editor or maybe some analytical software that you're using like RStudio, they all have uh, various different plugins, extensions that you can add on that allows you to do version control with Git in that environment that you, you want to be in. But then we also have specific Git clients. So this is applications with a GUI, graphical user interface, and some of the more popular examples are Git Kraken and GitHub Desktop. And today we're gonna to be using GitHub Desktop. That's sort of the one we've chosen. There's a couple of reasons for that. I won't go into details, but hopefully we're, it should be very similar across operating systems and people will have a similar experience. It's also one of the most sort of user-friendly in terms of its um, kind of GUI. So I think, 
you know, hopefully people will, will pick that up quicker. All right, we have a few misconceptions to go over before we before I pause for a moment and uh, just check in on any questions maybe before we move to the interactive part. But we just got a couple of things that we want to clarify just to make sure that people um, sort of don't get the wrong idea from, from the beginning. So I already touched on this one, but I just sort of, I'll, I'll put this here again. So Git does not equal GitHub. That, that's a, a misconception that it does. So Git is a version control system. GitHub is a way of actually using that system, if you like. Another misconception is that Git is only for code. So Git is very useful for code. That is actually my route into using it. It's really, really useful for code, but it's not only for programmers. So it's really for anyone wanting to use your version control, wanting to work collaboratively. Many different file types are supported. And in the example that we use today, we won't actually be using sort of, um, anything specific to a programming language. We've tried to make it um, sort of uh, more agnostic, if you like, to that. Another misconception is that Git is only for collaboration. Um, it's amazing for collaboration, but it is not only for working with others. Um, so GitHub strength is in that, but working with your previous um, and future self is also very valuable. And that is a great way to practice because if you start doing that, which is again what I did, you will become more confident when you actually work with others. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. If you don't have a reason to work with others yet, just try and use it yourself. Even if you think it's, you know, you don't quite need to use it yourself, just try to, because then you can practice, right? Uh, oh, I forgot I put this one in here. <laughs> Git does not auto save. I think this, this has come up in a couple of discussions um, that we've had recently that you do have to tell Git when you want it to take a snapshot, when you want it to pay attention to what you've done, basically. So there's some, sometimes people think that it, that it might, um, uh, yeah, that it might auto save, but it does not. And then this is not a misconception, but it's just a, a little sort of, um, uh, I guess, a, not a warning, but, but there's a lot of strange new words, strange new terminology, and it can take a while to get to know, but I just wanted a flag to be patient with yourself, don't worry if you have to reference the help sheets. I still do that. Ask us to remind you um, if you've for, you know, forgotten what things mean. But I promise you that the concepts are pretty logical. You'll get there eventually with the terminology. Um, it's just that there is a lot of new terms. And we're going to try to stay away from using all of the new terms when we use our interaction, our, in our, our interactive part, and then we'll sort of review them later. Um, OK. I think that has brought us up to yeah the end of the bit I'm talking. I, I will just check the, the chat to see if there was any sort of... No, don't, don't check the chat. It's mostly me and Victor. OK, yeah. I will not <laughs> check. <laughs> um, but that's fine. I'm going to... I gave people a lot of information there, so I do want to just sort of pause for a moment um, just, just while people... Uh, in case there's sort of anything that is really not making sense. Please feel free to um, yeah, sort of ask some questions. I just uh, Risha, uh, I don't I don't know if you can hear me. I missed uh, when you were saying what's the difference between Git and GitHub. Suddenly at that time I was checking the link that Irene sent. I missed uh, what was the difference you said between Git and GitHub? Sure, no worries. Let's um, I wasn't far away, so I'll put this slide back up because it's sort of but I can talk you through it. So. Git is the version control system. So it's it's the software, it's the it's it's sort of like it is what the, the system we're using that lets us do all of this version control. Mm -hmm. GitHub is a service which sort of uses Git um, and it allows you to collaborate with others mostly. That's sort of why it's there. It's it's in a different place as well. So Git with sort of we can work locally with Git, whereas as I'm sure you know, GitHub is is like a remote location you know we go to github.com so sort of you need basically yeah github is a way of using git does that make sense yeah 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 i, I understand now well, mostly i use github and never use git alone so i see it's same thing <laughs> i don't know it's yeah no thing. worries no worries that's sort of why we were trying to um uh trying to clarify that here most a lot of people start by just using github and you basically are using Git. Uh, yeah, 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 I understand. 
you're using it via uh, that collaborative tool, via being online, when actually the principles of it, you can uh, use it locally on your computer, basically, which is what we're going to do in a minute. <laughs> okay, thank you. No worries. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. All right. Um, is it is it worth pausing any more, Rini? Are there any sort of questions in the HackMD or should we sort of kind of keep moving a bit? Yeah, no questions in the HackMD, so I think you can you can keep going. Okay, sounds good. Um, and I, I've sort of put break in questions, but to be honest, we hadn't been going for too long. So perhaps we'll sort of, let's get going with the interactive part and um, maybe if people need um, a break. So what have we got? Is it 2.30 till 4.30? Is that what we, we yeah. have? Yeah. Can see where we're at at like 3 30. Um, exactly. yeah and if people just need a bit more of a brain break then we we can take it but um that sounds good okay so i'm just gonna leave it outside of um uh, full screen for now um yeah you can still see it fine yes Great. um so i promise you just uh one more slide before we actually get away from slides and we start sort of clicking around and, and doing a few things I just want to give you an overview of what we're going to try to achieve when, when we open up GitHub Desktop in a minute, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a repository. And it's worth just reflecting on what that, that terminology means. Um, so many people um, call it a repo. So as, as it's a kind of abbreviation of a repository, um, it's very similar to a folder or a directory on your computer. It's where all of the files are stored for a project and it includes files that Git uses to track the changes. So that's sort of the repository is an all encompassing term. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a few um, silly little files, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, the file content is not important. So don't worry too much about what is actually in the files, but um, I will go through it just so we can sort of understand a little bit. Um, but, oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna see how Git interacts with us when we edit an existing file, when we add a new file, when we edit multiple files at the same time, um, when we delete a file, when we rename a file, when we view the history of our repo, and when we revert to a previous state. So that was just trying to give you an idea of what we're gonna try and do. And then one last bit of terminology for you. I'm trying to stay away from it, but we can't, we can't avoid all of it right now. So Git calls taking a snapshot, uh, saving your work. So Git calls that a commit. And you're gonna see that in a minute. So there's just a bit of terminology and I'll, I'll, I'll go over it um, as we go. So let's pause from the slides now. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Can't get out of my slides. All right. Do you still see my desktop too? You see my like big blank desktop? Great, cool. It's always fun having two screens, isn't it? All right. Um, okay, let me open up a few things and then I'll, I'll sort of tell you what you should be doing. But now we're gonna move away from slides and you guys have to do some work too, please. <laughs> okay. So all I've done so far is I have opened GitHub Desktop on my computer. So I hope that that isn't too tricky if everyone, uh, hopefully your symbol looks similar to mine. Uh, it could look different on Windows. I'm aware that a few of us are using different operating systems, but we're gonna start by just making sure we can open it. Don't worry if it's a bit of a different color, but you should have something that says, let's get started, if, particularly if you haven't used it before. Okay. Yeah. A little bit bigger, Rachel? Yes. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to try and do this bit slowly, but this is where you sort of might have to use the, the sort of question and chat functions if, if you know, I do want to make sure everyone's sort of with me at this stage. So this is the page that we come to when we open GitHub Desktop for a first time, particularly if we haven't used it before. If you've used it before, it may actually look different. Don't worry about that for now. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of an orientation of what it's asking us right now. Like, what can we actually do? 
So we can create a new repository. We can clone one from the internet. We can create one on our hard drive, or we can add an existing one. And don't worry about this section here, um, your repositories. I have, this is my account, so I have a lot here. Um, you might have some, you might have none, that's okay. So what we're gonna basically do is we're gonna click this third option here, create a new repository on your hard drive because we're sort of imagining that we're coming to a project fresh and that we have some files that we've created and we want to version control them. So we're gonna create a new repository. And after you've done that, you should have a little pop-up that is asking you to input lots of different things. And so we're gonna do that together now. So hopefully everyone has found their way to something that looks like create a new repository. So this will make sense in a minute, or if, uh, for people that looked at the files, you'll know that we're gonna be talking about sandwiches today. So I'm going to call my new repository sandwich survey. So all of the files that we created are to do with taking a survey about sandwiches. And that's just to, just to be a bit fun. So that's, so you could call it something similar or just exactly the same, just call it sandwich survey. And then it wants a description of what this repository is, right? In this case, we don't need to worry about that too much, but let's write something in. So let's write a repo to learn Git. Something along those lines. So that's just describing the purpose of this, um, of this repository. Now, it will ask you where you want this repository to go. Um, when you installed GitHub desktop on your computer, it will have probably made a folder for you in documents called GitHub, even without you asking, uh, without asking you. Um, that is a completely fine place to put it, but it actually doesn't matter where we put it. As long as you know where you've chosen, then it's your computer. So hopefully you can navigate to that point, but it's completely fine to go with the default location. Um, I am actually going to deviate from the default location and just uh, select my desktop because I want to be able to just see it a little bit easier and not be clicking around with my finder. But it really doesn't matter. So just wherever you want to put it. What's going to happen when we click create repository in the location in this path? So it's in users, my username, and on my desktop or in your documents, it's going to create a folder. Well, basically a repository, but it's going to create a folder called sandwich survey. So that's what's going to happen in a minute. So that's, uh, yeah, I think that covers that section. Now, um, it's asking us if we want to do a couple more things. It's asking us if we want to initialize this repository with a readme, there's lots of uh, fun words there. So it's basically saying, do you want us to make a blank file for you called a readme? Now, people may have noticed that we already have a readme, so I'm not gonna tick that box because I've already made a readme for you. Um, but essentially, um, if you didn't have a readme, that's a good, good idea. Now, I think a lot of these things are gonna come up in lesson two and three, and they all relate to best practices when setting up a repository. I'm not gonna talk about them now um, because it's just a, it's not really needed for the fundamentals of learning Git, but just, just know that it, it's asking you a couple more things which are related to best practices. So to summarize, we're not gonna tick this box and you can leave all of this as none. So we can sort of do that. Okay, so I'm going to click create repository. Uh, hopefully that was slow enough <laughs> people can follow. And then lots of things change. So I'm just gonna kind of keep it there a second. All right. So now we're going to have a bit, we're going to have another orientation of what we're looking at. So again, sorry if people have used this before, this is a complete sort of beginner look at what, what software we're, we have in front of us. So now we've created a repository, we have a lot of boxes, um, sort of a lot of different sections here, and I'm just going to talk you through what they are, okay? So it, it's very nice, it tells you sort of where you're working, it's telling you that the current repository is called Sandwich Survey. And if you hover over it, you can probably see the path, the, the location of where it is on your computer, right? So that's, that's consistent. Now, when you make a repository, it makes a branch for you called main. We're only gonna be working in one branch today, 
And you don't need to really worry about this, but we're working in a space called main. It's like the default space to work. Um, Arini is gonna talk about branches in lesson two. There's lots of reasons why you might make another branch and you would call it a different thing. But this is why I'm pointing this out because the words are right there. So we are working in a, in a space called main, in the main branch, if, if you like. So that's what that means. Now, if you look at this um, uh, final panel, if you like, up here where my mouse is, this is all to do with talking to GitHub. So talking to the remote, and we will not be doing that today. We are only, you are only working locally with files on your computer. Um, and so that is gonna be really useful for the next lessons, but that's not relevant for today. Um, okay, we've still got a few more boxes to go <laughs> over this, this side. Uh, there's nothing in here right now. And so I'm not gonna go into it in detail because the detail will come. This is where we track sort of all of our changes basically. So when we make changes to files, it's gonna come up here and we're gonna write messages in these two boxes here to tell us why we've made a change. So that is what this panel is for. Now, finally, there's this big section here and this is GitHub desktop just being, um, it likes to be helpful. So it likes to suggest suggested um, so some next steps that you could take if you like. So it really wants us to publish our repository. It always wants you to publish your repository, but we're going to ignore it for now. We aren't going to do that. It's telling me that I can open it in a text editor and I have probably a different thing to some of you here because that's my default. So that's just a editor on your computer that you might have chosen. Um, and it also says you can view the files um, on your computer. And I am gonna click on this one just to show you that that brings up um, the folder on my computer. Okay. Before we move on, I just want to show you that you can customize this, but we're not gonna do any of it, but I'm just gonna show you that if you go to GitHub desktop and you go to settings, um, you can see who I am and we're not gonna do any of it. I just wanna sort of really show you where it is. You can see that you can choose an editor and you can choose various different um, appearances, lots of different choices. So when you start using GitHub more, you will have an idea of how you want to use it and then you can change these settings. But for now, we're gonna go with all the defaults um, to try and make it as similar as possible for, for, you know, for everyone, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'll come out of this. Okay, so. What are we doing next? Mm -hmm. All right. So we created um, a repository called Sandwich Survey and sort of on the computer, so show in Finder, on my computer, it looks just like a normal folder, right? I'm aware that we have no files in here yet. We will add some files. We'll start editing them. It will be great. But at the moment, it just looks like I've made a... Um, a sort of a normal folder. But I just want to flag that one thing did happen when we created this and GitHub or GitHub desktop created a hidden folder for you. And I think it would be great if we can try to find that on our computers. So I'm gonna give two sets of instructions here because I think we've got Mac and we've got some Windows and I hope, hope that uh, covers it. But um, at the moment, this looks like a blank folder, but if I write, I'll, I'll put this in the chat in a minute, or if someone else can, it would be great. Um, I'm gonna do command shift dot. So it's a bit fiddly. <laughs> um, and hopefully you can see now that um, actually there is a folder in here and it starts with a dot. And most hidden folders or, or hidden folders on your computer will start with a dot. Um, and you don't automatically see them unless you sort of ask to see them. Now, um, in Windows, um, it is slightly different. Uh, let me just see. Do, do, do. Ah, Arena has posted it, amazing. So this is not crucial, um, but it's just great if you can do this because it sort of gives you a bit of an insight into what has happened. We haven't just made a folder. We've made what looks like, it's, it's pretty much a folder, but it's got some things in it. And ah, there's loads of things. Let's, let's not look at them right now. <laughs> like There's lots of things in the folder. All of those things are to do with tracking the files. That is how Git is gonna do it for us. 
and more advanced use. You can look at those files if you want. You don't need to. It's more about giving you a context. That is actually what happened when we created a um, uh, when we created the repo, basically. Um, okay. I will pause there for a moment in case people are sort of fiddling around with that. And I'll just look at the next step. So hopefully people manage to see that hidden folder. Okay. Um, what am I doing? All right. So right now we have an empty re repository, right? So we want to actually start tracking some files. So hopefully you all downloaded three um, example files for this tutorial. And what I, I just actually downloaded them into this folder here. It doesn't really matter. Hopefully you can find out where they are on your computer. And what I want you to do is move them or copy them. Uh, we want a copy of these files into the folder, into sandwich survey that we just created. So I'll show you what I mean, but hopefully that made sense. So I'm gonna copy these three files into this folder. You get a lovely noise as well. Okay, so uh, hopefully you all have those files. Um, if you don't, ask in the chat and you can be given the link of, of where to find them, but we, we did go over that. So hopefully you have that. Um, so let's just, we need to imagine that these are the files we care about when we've started a project, right? That these are the files we want to start version controlling. Let's just have a brief look at the files so we know what they are because else sort of the changes aren't gonna make very much sense. So I'm gonna just use a very simple um, text editor to, <laughs> to scroll down for it. Oh, no, yeah, there it is, okay. I'm gonna use a very simple text editor just to try to minimize the amount of like different bits of software that we were sort of playing around with. Um, so let's think about what, we're, so we've got, this is our readme file and a readme file is pretty much an overview of what your project is. But again, more on that later. So sandwich is a staple part of many people's diets, particularly in Western culture. Little data exists on sandwich eating habits today. Thank you for taking part in the super sandwich survey. This repository will be used as a reference guide for anyone to taking part in the survey. Um, and in this repository, you'll find a CSV file, which is used to log a new sandwich. That's already, that's all it does. There's also an instructions file, which, which explains the features of the CSV file. And this is just some silly stuff about an app existing, which doesn't really exist, right? Because I just made this up. So you have to imagine that you're creating this repository, right? You're creating a guide for someone else about a sandwich survey. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So that's the readme. Um, instructions. Okay. Okay. Instructions file. It's not lovely to look at, but I think we'll go with it. Really, um, the instructions file is telling people about the column names in the CSV file. This was the, this was the bad way to open it. I'll, I'll open the CSV file first. So we can see very simple table here, right? We've got a sandwich name, we've got a location, we've got the person's initials, we've got the type and we've got the date. So it's just some information about a sandwich. So that's, we try to keep it quite simple. So the instructions file therefore tells you a little bit more about each of the columns. So it's kind of like a little guide to that CSV. So let's, I'm not gonna read all of these things out because we'll sort of talk about it as we go. But basically I hope that makes sense we're logging sandwiches. Think about a sandwich you like, because later I'm going to ask you to put a sandwich in one of these files. I must have been hungry this day when I made this. I don't know. Um, right. So now we understand the three files that we're going to be working with. And as you can see, this was my repo. And inside here is my hidden files, but don't worry about them. And our three files that we're going to be working with. So I'll just close that for now and go back to GitHub desktop and things have changed. So that's exciting. Um, so I hope that this looks similar for you. What GitHub desktop has noticed is it's noticed that it's got three new files that it's just, uh, that we just added, which, which is what we did, right? Now, the, the sort of GUI is quite nice here. It has some really nice symbols and make sure you hover over things because it gives you more information. 
So we've put three files into this um, staging area and we hover over this little plus and it's saying new. It knows this is a new file. This file was not in the repository beforehand. So this is sort of how we would start the process of GitHub desktop um, paying attention to our files, okay? So we're, what we have to do now is we actually have to write a message to um, take our very first snapshot, take our very first save point, but in Git language, it's called a commit. So we're only just gonna write in this first box for now. So we're going to write something quite um, simple. We're gonna write something like uh, three starting files, something like that. So that's just in that box. Don't worry about the big box for now. I'll, I'll come back to that. That's for basically if you have more to say, but we don't really have much more to say than three starting files right now. So I'll just make sure that everyone um, has seen that. And it will have been done by default. We'll come back to this later, but all of your files should be ticked. So you should have a nice blue tick next to each of the three files. And we're gonna write three starting files. Don't worry about this panel for now. We're gonna come back to that. It doesn't really mean too much when you start, when you first start. Okay, so I'm gonna um, review what I've done. Three changed files. I've seen the message and I'm gonna click this big blue button. And the big blue button says commit to main. So it's taking the snapshot. Um, and main means the branch that we were in, right? So, that's, so we're gonna do that. Commit. And then they disappear. Ah, okay. Where did they go? They went over here. Well, they didn't go over here, but you can see the information about what happened. So um, we're going to talk about this history tab in a lot, in a bit more detail, a little bit later in the tutorial. But I just wanted to show you that it knows we've done it, right? So three starting files, it knows we added them. So we're going to come back to this history chat tab but it's just a sort of flag that it, it's logged that for us. Okay, and it's saying you've sort of got no changes now. You've basically done, you've done all your changes. Okay, right. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've basically um, added three files. That's all we've done. So that would be something that you would start with, right? You would have some style files that you would normally start with um, and you've added them, but now we're going to edit them. And you're gonna imagine that this is over a period of time, you know, you're working on these files, you're editing, you're changing. You're, you're getting these files ready to share with others perhaps, because you've sort of made this kind of silly sandwich survey. And you're, you'll want to make sure that all these files are sort of ready for other people to look at, okay? So we're gonna make a few edits. So you one thing I want to flag is that you cannot edit in GitHub Desktop. So GitHub Desktop is, telling us what we've done to our files, but it's not a text editor. Um, so that is why you saw me opening up um, the files and you can choose any text editor that you would like. You can double click and use the default. If you're comfortable using something else, that's fine as well. I'm gonna use the default to try to make it more familiar and maybe more similar to what you could use but really we are just editing a file. So you can edit a file however you like. So I'm gonna open up this instructions file and <laughs> make it big again. All right. All these edits are gonna be really simple because I really want you to just understand GitHub desktop. So let's look at this row together. This row says location of sandwich sighting. That's not very helpful because do we mean a cafe name or do we mean geographical location? So we're just basically going to improve the um, improve this line. So I am going to improve it. Geographical location of sandwich sighting. And then let's put something like uh, city country. Now let's give an example. Let's do like London, UK. Okay. Um, so this is this is what I've done. I've I've just sort of changed this one row in this one file um, to say something like geographical location of sandwich sighting, city, country, you know, then you, in brackets you could give an example. 
Um, that's just, uh, yeah, so if everyone can do that, just edit that one row of that one file. It doesn't matter too much on the wording, but you can just copy mine. So then obviously we want to make sure it's saved um, before we close it. Okay. Right, now let's go back to GitHub Desktop. Something has changed again. So you don't have to sort of have GitHub Desktop open for it to know this. You, we could have actually closed it in the meantime and it would have still tracked what we had done. Um, but we can see that it, it noticed a change. So let me see if I can make this window a bit bigger actually, because we can use the full space of it. Okay. Okay, so GitHub uh, Desktop is now telling us that it's noticed a file has been modified. So please note that this is a different symbol than before. Um, it says modified and it's a different color. So it's quite clever. It knows, it knows sort of what you've done, but we still have to choose to commit this change. Um, this panel here, which I told you to not worry about too much, visualizes the differences for you. And it's, it's really helpful. You don't have to ask it to visualize the differences. It's just doing it. In other um, Git clients or the way in other ways of using Git, sometimes you have to ask to see a difference. But here we can see that no longer will it say, so the red means what's being taken away and the green means what's being added to this file. So it's saying like on line eight, no longer will it say this, it's gonna say this new one. So it gives you color coding. It also gives you these minuses and these pluses. Which I think is nice because you know obviously if there's color blindness you can kind of hopefully still follow uh, with some of the symbols perhaps as well. So it knows what we've done. So now as before we now have to write another message to um, signify uh, what we've done. And so I'm going to start writing that and I'm going to write something like improved column description. Um, Okay, for location. Yeah, sure, that'll be fine. So it's, it's something to signify that we we wrote a better description for the column, uh, for for the yeah, for location. Um, improved column description for location. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, write something that describes what we did. All right. So then, as before, we're now going to check we've got this ticked. Just to show you, you can untick it, but make sure it's ticked. All right. And then we're going to press commit to main just as we did before. So I'm going to press the big blue button that says commit to main. And then it disappears again. So it's gone into the history tab. So that's what happens. OK. So we have edited a file. So that's great. Um, I'm going to now think about other things you're going to want to do. Um, a lot of the time we rename files, right? Like you, you find you call a file something and then you rename it. So let's do, um, yeah, let's do the rename because it's quite quick. So people that were paying attention to these files may have noticed that this one has a very silly name. It's got a lot of S's on the, on the end. So let's very simply, however you would rename a file on your computer, we're going to rename this file and we're going to rename it to make sure it is spelling instructions correctly. So all I'm going to do is delete some S's. So now I have a file that says instructions.txt and it is named correctly, or it's spelled correctly, shall we say. Um, it would be really funny if it wasn't because I'm not very good at spelling, but I think that is how you spell instructions. <laughs> so that's good, but you, you, you get it. All right, so we've renamed a file. Hopefully that was, I'll, I'll move to this panel now because hopefully that wasn't too, didn't take you too long. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through, we're gonna do a very similar thing to what we just did. So that's why I'm not gonna spend too long on it, but we're gonna do a very similar thing. It's noticed that a file called instructions is not gonna be there anymore, but a file called instructions is. And bear with me for a minute because it says this file is deleted and this one's new, but it will know that we've renamed it. And I'll show you how it knows that in a minute, but it sort of, it, it's, it's not the sort of most helpful uh, notification actually, but it's sort of saying that a file called this name, uh, you know, is being deleted and this one's been added. But let's, let's move forward and write our message like we did before. 
And then we're going to see in the history tab that it is a bit more clever than it than we think it is there. Like it, it does know that we've renamed a file. So let's um, what, what's oh yeah let's say um, text file I don't know renamed. It doesn't matter too much. You can write quite a small little um, description of sort of what we've done. Text file renamed something like that. So I'm going to commit it to main. I'm doing the exactly the same thing as I did before. Make sure all of your files are ticked, and then we're going to press commit to main. And now this is where I want us to look at the history tab. And perhaps maybe what we could do is we could look at the history tab, and then we'll see if people need a break because um, it might be a good good point then. But I think I want to finish this section so that you can um, remember what just happened with the renaming. So. If everyone could go to the history tab, so we've been working in the changes tab, but if everyone could go to the history tab, that would be really good. And I'm going to talk you through what we what we can see here. So first of all, let's just look at the last thing we did. Text file renamed. If you hover over this symbol, it says renamed and there's a new symbol. It would be helpful if that was previously, but never mind. We, we know that GitHub desktop knows we renamed the file. We know that it knows that it's not a new file. It has been renamed. So I'm gonna talk you through a couple of the things we're seeing here because there is a lot of information in this history tab. And when you start using GitHub desktop, you don't need to know what all of it is, but let's just, let's just look at a couple of these letters, a couple of these numbers, just to make sure we have a feel for it, right? So, you can see the history of the whole, um, of all the changes we made. So the, we started this 22 minutes ago, apparently. <laughs> so that's helpful for me. Um, so, so that's telling you something about the time. And it's also telling you something about the user. So obviously it's all me um, at the moment, but you should have something similar here. You should have your, you might not have a picture. Um, and then you have a name and you have a time. So it has the information like that. These texts in bold was the commit message we used, right? So the, the message that we used to describe the change that we made. And then the final thing, I think it's the final thing. Yeah, the final thing I want to point you point your attention to is that there are there is a string of um, sort of text and numbers. Um, and this is a hash, this is a unique ID. And so this, every time you make a commit, every time we decide to take that snapshot, um, it will assign it this unique ID. You don't need to do anything with that ID, but that is the fundamentals of how Git works because it, it sort of needs to have that information. If you do more advanced things with Git, then sometimes it is important to know that. But you'll notice that every single one of them has a different one, right? And they're quite long. You can copy it if you needed to. Um, last thing I'll show you is that it's it gives us a really nice summary, right, of what we've done. So three starting files, we can see like three changed files. And here it was only one changed file. And it gives you all of the uh, description of what you've done. So this is a really nice uh, visual way of, of sort of seeing what's happened in your repository. Obviously, we've only got four things, so it's quite easy. Um, when you have more than four things, you do need to have some ways of, let's say, browsing your history, right? Just as you would browse history in any other sort of file sort of storage logging system. But for now, what's really nice about this is that we can just see here and if it went on, we could scroll down. So that's quite nice. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think, I think that now would be a good time to pause if people do need a five minute break. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe that would be good just before we move on to the next bit. The reactions, put yes if you want to break, put no if you want to keep going, you're hungry for more Git. Um, okay, people are saying yes, uh, they want to break. So let's take a five minute break and we will reconvene at 3.43. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, so I'll just leave my screen up, I think. Um, just leave everything as it was. So yeah. And I will pause the recording. 
Okay, we are recording again. Okay, all right. So what we've done so far then is we, we created um, a repository, we added some files to it and we just edit, edited a file, right? We, we made a very simple edit. And then we also renamed a file. So I was trying to think about what other things you would do. Uh, well, a lot of the time we wanna create a new file, right? So we're gonna create a new file. We're also gonna delete a file and, and that kind of thing. So just trying to think of common um, things you're gonna do with files. So that's the next step we're gonna do. We're gonna add a new file. So the easiest way for probably for me to do this is I'm just probably gonna copy my instructions file and paste it. Um, and then I'm gonna probably call it something like more instructions. It doesn't really matter how you make this text file, but that is probably the easiest way. And I'm gonna open it up and actually just remove this content though. And I'm just gonna probably write more instructions here or something like that. It doesn't, oh, this is tiny, but it doesn't matter too much. So I made a new file. I called it more instructions and I wrote more instructions inside. Um, so try to do something like that on your computer. So now inside this folder, we had the instructions, but we also have more instructions. Okay. So hopefully everyone's done that. So let's look at, um, yeah, let's look at this GitHub uh, desktop again, see what it's, see what it's noticed. So it's noticed that we have a new file. So that was similar to when we sort of um, started our repository, when we created our repository, right? When we added the initial files. Um, don't worry about this. This is a bit of a formatting thing. It, it's basically saying, I would have really liked it if you had had a new line at the end of the file. We're not gonna worry about that right now, but it's like a sort of formatting suggestion that it's giving to me that may be relevant in later lessons, but let's not worry about that for now. So we've created a new file. And actually in this case, um, the suggested commit message, create more instructions, is, is pretty good. So I think I might leave that default. So just, just be aware that sometimes there is a default that it, it says something. Uh, most of the time it's better to um, write something a bit more informative than the default. But I think in this case, we that kind of captures it. So you can see that it's uh, gonna let us click this but, uh, this box, commit to main. So I'm gonna do that. So we've added the file, make sure it's ticked and then we're gonna commit to main. So same thing happened as before. This is now in our history. It knows that we've created this file. So that's great. Okay. So the next use case is very related <laughs> because what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna delete this file. <laughs> Let's say you created a file, you worked on it for a while, and then you realized you didn't need it. And so we're just gonna try and keep it simple and just sort of delete that same file, just so that you can see um, how Git also deals with deleting files. So this more instructions file, which is really not doing much for us. Uh, we're going to, however you delete a file on your computer, uh, just delete. Uh, so it's for me, it's moved to bin. You can drag it however you like. So I'm gonna, oh yes, I did delete the right one. <laughs> that would have been funny. Okay, so Hopefully this is starting to be a bit um, more self-explanatory now, but that we've got a new little symbol here. It's saying it's deleted, right? So it's all it's always very helpful. It tells you what it think it thinks you've done. And we can see that all of this is red because it's it's a deleted file. So the red and the minus is suggesting that things are being taken away. And again, this this little commit message here, delete more instructions, is is good. But perhaps let's actually look at this larger box now. Um, so I said, let's not worry about it before. And that's because we didn't really have too much to say, but I think maybe this is a scenario where we could think, uh, we could write a larger message and say, um, I don't know, deleted more instruction text file because um, wasn't, useful to the workflow or something. It's honestly, I don't really know what I'm saying, but essentially this box is for when you have more to say. Um, these are really simple examples. So we really don't have a lot to say about them, but I'm sure you can think of scenarios where you would have, um, you know, a reason to write a sentence or two. 
describing a change you made. And I actually think there is a limit and I can't remember what it is. There is a character limit for this commit message. So we've just been writing in this box. That's called a commit message. And there is a um, character limit to that and it should be quite short and sweet. But sometimes that message doesn't um, fit the bill and you sort of need to write a longer description of what we've done. So that's sort of, it wasn't really needed here, but I just wanted to um, sort of demonstrate that, uh, that box for you. So again, as before, we're gonna review it and then we're gonna press commit to main and it's gonna disappear into our history tab again. So it knows we've created it and then we deleted it. So that's two use cases for you. Okay. Um, can I pause here just for a second? Because as I was following along with what you were doing, Rachel, um, my DS store file appeared. So I was wondering if you, I don't, maybe we want to ask people if that's happened for them, because if it has, we should address it. If it has. Very okay. Good question. Yes. And I'm surprised that mine didn't. Um, I was sort of expecting that to happen for me. And uh, then I was going to flag it. But I think, yeah, so um, Arini is talking about there being a new hidden file that has just sort of appeared in this box. We can put it in the chat perhaps if, uh, so it's called this. So it's, it's dot ds underscore store. This will only be relevant for Mac users, by the way. So this is when you interact with files on Finder, which to be honest, um, yeah, I mean, maybe sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but when you interact with files on Finder, um, it's something about the way your computer is um, saving the visuals, basically, of, of sort of what your finder is looking like. Um, you can delete the file. It really won't cause any issue. It's quite hard for me to demonstrate it here, but um, you can right click and do the ignore. Do you think that would be good for me to try and show? I can make a quick change, maybe. Yeah, because you shouldn't... I mean, this is more important for next workshops. Hmm. But whatever you do, you should apparently not put your DS store uh, in a public repository because that reveals information about your computer that should not be shared. So yeah. with that tick box, yeah, exactly. There you go, it's, 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 it's arrived. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so I... I I don't know why it didn't arrive before because I copied a file and I tried to copy a file in order to make that happen. So interesting. But um, yeah, so Irini, you were saying that the best practice is to ignore it, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So essentially, um, like just to, just to summarize, this will be relevant for Mac users, but it is actually quite important. So if you are in a scenario where you have this file, don't worry if, about understanding fully what it's doing right now, but we will select ignore file. And that's because we just do not want GitHub desktop to track this file. So that's not deleting it, that's ignoring it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna tell it to ignore file. So if anyone's in this scenario, they can do that as well. Um, and I'm actually, that one doesn't matter. And then it's created a file for me which summarizes which files it ignores. So it's created a file called git ignore and it's put that file name in it. You could put loads of other stuff in this file and that will come up in later lessons. But for now, if this file is getting in the way, we do want to ignore it. So um, I'm going to write because DS store was created. Do you think that's all right for now, Arini? Yep, sounds good. So let's commit that change. And don't worry about what I'm doing right now. <laughs> We're gonna come back to that. Okay, cool. But yeah, no, that's a, that's a good flag because that little DS store is a bit annoying. All right. Da, da, da. Okay. So we created a file, we deleted a file, we um, sorted out some of the DS stores. Let's say that you opened up a file on your computer and you accidentally made a change. So I just want everyone to open up instructions and just write some nonsense text in it. You know how that happens sometimes if, if a file is open and you know you write some text or you might have made a change that you actually don't want. But basically we're not gonna spend long time writing it. Open up the instructions file, write something silly in it 
and then let's close it. So um, this looks very familiar again. It sees that we've modified this file, but I'm going to show you that if you see if you see something you've modified and you don't like it, you can discard that, which is actually what I just did. <laughs> but we're going to discard um, a change to that file. So what we're doing here is I'm right clicking on this row. So sorry if that wasn't clear when I did the DS code, but DS store. So we're right clicking. And when you right click, you get quite a lot of options. Um, and fortunately, it's the first option that we want. So it's discard changes. So that is what it sounds like. The changes that are visualized in this panel here, it's going to discard them for us. It's going to make sure that they go away. So I'm going to click discard changes. And then it's going to say, are you sure you want to do it? It's basically going to remove a version of this file into our trash. So we would actually have one opportunity to get it back if we wanted to, but we're pretty sure. So I'm going to say discard changes. Let's just check that it actually has done it. So I'm going to open up instructions and it has. So the change that we um, accidentally made is reverted that for us. Oh, I should have used revert. <laughs> It's discarded that for us. The reason why I said I shouldn't use revert is because revert means something very specific in Git language. So uh, it, it's not a helpful word to use in that setting. OK, right. So if we're coming closer to the end now, but these last steps might take us a little bit longer because one thing we've been doing so far, um, let me open up show and finder. One thing we've been doing so far is we've been editing one file at a time. That is very unlikely that you're going to only edit one file at one time. When you sort of have these complicated, particularly coding environments, right? Again, we've chosen very simple files so that everyone can hopefully follow along. But you're normally going to edit multiple files at, multiple at, at one time. So we're going to do that now. We're going to edit two files at, at the same time, and we're and then going to edit three. And we're going to have a few different use cases for what the commit message will look like when we've done that. So let's let's move on to doing that. So we're going to make two edits. The first edit, we're going to we we like editing this one. Apparently, <laughs> we're going to open this instructions file again. Okay. Uh, actually, I want to demonstrate something first. So when I've opened this CSV file. Um, just to say, you can open this as a text file as well. So this CSV file is just a text file. Uh, okay. So you can open it as a text file, but I'm opening it in this way just so everyone can kind of see it nicely. So I just want you to look at the content of this file with me for a moment. In this row, we have an acronym, and that's not very helpful because if people don't know what a BLT is, which is bacon, lettuce, tomato, then they might be confused by the acronym. So we're going to add a little instruction into our instructions file to say, do not use acronyms. So let's do that. So open up the instructions file, however way you did before. And this is going to come probably on the row of the sandwich name, right? Let's, let's put it there. Do not use at pro. <laughs> See, I wasn't lying. Uh, um, um, I wasn't lying, uh, really. NIMS. There you go. I think that's correct. Can't spell. Very well. So do not use acronyms. So um, we've edited the instructions file to, to tell people that when you input a new sandwich, you do not want to use an acronym. Well, it wouldn't be very good then if our example sandwich so we're giving people a few little example sandwiches here. Let's make it bigger, let's make it bigger. You know, we've got to go by be best practices. It wouldn't be very good to give someone an instruction, do not use acronyms and then use an acronym. So let's change this and, you know, make sure we, we don't use an acronym. So let's, if, if you want, you can also think about a different, it doesn't have to be bacon, <laughs> beetroot, lettuce and tomato if you want. Up to you. If you don't eat bacon, then you can you can choose a different thing um, for the for the bee. Up to you. Okay. Bacon, lettuce, tomato. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. I've changed the last row of this CSV file. It's a text file, so I opened it just like any other text file. And now we do not have an acronym, which is great. So we're sort of consistent within ourselves. All right. Let's go and see what happened here. Right. 
So this time we modified two files. Hopefully this is starting to become quite familiar by this stage, so I won't spend quite as long on it, but we've modified this file and we've modified this file and we're gonna write a message about why we did that. And that will be something like removed acronym, for example, sandwich. Let's see if it lets me write, oh, an added instruction. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't like that. Okay. Let's use the description box. So remove acronym, for example, sandwich. So we, um, uh, and let's just, maybe we'll write that again down here. Um, An added instruction. Wow. There we go. Something like that, just to say that you've removed the acronym for the example sandwich. Okay. So now we're going to commit to main just like we've been doing. And we see the history tab is now moved into the history tab. So hopefully that example is quite straightforward because we're going to move on to a slightly more complicated example. Still not very complicated on the changes, but with the with the edits. So in a scenario where you might have edited lots of files. Some of these edits are related to each other conceptually. Some of the edits are not related to each other. This is going to happen. You're going to notice a spelling mistake and you're going to edit one of those files. You're going to add a new heading. You're going to improve you know, that file in that way. Sometimes that they're related. So what we're going to do now is we're going to edit three files, but then we're going to do two commits. And I'm going to show you how to do that because we want to group some of the edits and we want to separate some. So that's sort of that's what we're going to do next. We're going to edit the, the, the three uh, three files at the same time. So these files are <laughs> you're probably getting sick of a few sandwich files now, um, but let's just open them up again. Right. Da, da, da. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, this is the slightly more fun bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can decide that. So we're going to edit. We're going to open up the, the CSV file. OK, so. You can open it in any way you like. I will open it with the simple one just because I've been doing that so far. We can minimize things as well, can't we? Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to add an, a whole new row to this file. So I'll give people like a little bit longer to do that. To think about the sandwich that you like. Um, so don't change anything else in this file, but just add a whole new row. So I'll do that. Um, on the screen, but you don't have to copy mine. You can if you want, if you, but feel free to sort of make up anything you, anything you want. So it is an example sandwich though, so we should put yes. Let's just go for some like falafel or something. I don't know if falafel wrap is a sandwich, but I, I think it could be. All right. Um, I don't know. Harris. Some random initials. This type I did not explain. <laughs> S means that you just saw the sandwich. T means you also tasted the sandwich. It, it, it doesn't really matter. The date is in the format of, the, of a year and then a month. I'm just going to use today's date because it's simple like this. So you basically have to make sure that you've got something written in each one of these and you have to you have to separate them via commas because this is a common comma separated um, file. Okay, so I'll leave that up there for a moment just to make sure everyone's written a new row. Okay, so hopefully. Everyone has written a new row with a new sandwich, and it doesn't really matter what you've written, but maybe it does. Maybe, you know, write your favorite sandwich down. Okay, so we've done that. And like I said, we were going to make two edits, right? So we're going to make uh, an, another edit now. Uh, let's open, get our desktop back up. Um, you will notice, so I told you that these, these edits are going to be very very simple. You'll notice that in this file, 
it tells us that we had three example sandwiches. Well, we have just added an example sandwich. So you need to change this three to four, okay? This is a very simple change, but that goes with what we've just done. And then we'll do something else in a minute. So everyone should open up the instructions file. This used to say three, now it says four. So we've done two changes. You added a row. Now there are four example sandwiches. Please change three to four. Okay, I'm gonna save that. And then we're gonna do one more change before, um, one more change before we go back to GitHub desktop. And again, I'm gonna let you decide what you want to do, but I will open up the file that <laughs> I always have to find it, okay. You can tell I don't use text editor very much because my computer is confused. Okay, all right. Da, da, da. Right, so this is a readme file. I actually think we haven't edited this yet because apparently, yeah, we did, there was, there was nothing, to, it's just perfect, we didn't edit it. But I want you to make any edit you want to this readme file. It really does not matter what you do, but please make it not relevant <laughs> to what we just did. So we we added a sandwich, just any edit. So you can copy me if you can't think of anything. I'm just going to pretend that I wrote another FAQ here. So FAQ three. So if, if you want to just copy me, that's fine, but you can make any other edit that you like. So I've written um, FAQ three here. So I'll just make sure that everyone has opened the README file in whatever you, way you like, and you have added something, deleted something. It doesn't matter too much. Okay. Now I will go back to GitHub Desktop now because we will get a very nice summary of what we've done. So let's just go through what we've done. We added a sandwich row. We then changed from three to four, and then we added another FAQ for people. Now, this is where these ticks come in handy, because what we're going to do now is we're going to actually do multiple commits, uh, because we should not commit all these changes together, because they are not related to each other. So up until now, we have not done anything with these ticks. But what these ticks means is that they mean that the file is ready to be committed. Um, it's This is called a staging area, and it's like a preparation um, area, basically. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, untick this readme file here, and we're going to make sure that just your instruction file and your new sandwich citing file is ticked. So um, make sure that your GitHub desktop looks like this. And then I'm going to write a little message, added a fourth sandwich example. So I'm just going to make sure everyone is is up to speed on that. <laughs> I saw some smiles, so I'm going to look at some of the sandwich banter in the chat while while people uh, <laughs> while people <laughs> take <laughs> what is a sandwich? Oh, it is hotly debated. I know. Maybe maybe it was a bit uh, bad, bad territory for me to go there. I should have defined a sandwich in the README file. Maybe that can be a change someone can make. If you would like to define a sandwich and put references in there, you should probably do that after the tutorial. Uh, wonderful. I actually spent a long time on Wikipedia looking at sam what sandwiches were the other day. So, okay, so everyone should have two things ticked here related to us adding a fourth sandwich. So make sure your readme is not ticked and then you're going to see what happens. It's not overly exciting, I promise, but you know, we'll see. So we're going to press commit to main now with our two ticked. Okay, so what's happened is that those two files have been committed together here and as always we you know as before we we see them we've still got one file left so that means we need to write a different message about this file because it was not conceptually related to um the change we made before so now make sure you tick it it's not going to let you do anything if you don't tick it anyway so make sure you've ticked it in git language that's called you know staging a file but don't worry about that too much and then we're going to write um uh, if you did a different change, you're going to now have to describe that change here, but I'm going to just write a simple um, added FAQ3. No, added FAQ3 to app, um, about app. Right. 
Okay, so that's what I did. I added FAQ3. Um, we'll have to imagine that it was something helpful, but that's, so So if you write a description in there, as we've been doing before, we can see this file is modified and we're gonna commit domain. Great. All right. Okay, so there is just one sort of activity left to do. And I see that we're all right for time. So that's great. We've got about 20 minutes. Um, we do have a few slides to go through um, sort of after this last activity that would be great to sort of contextualize some of the learning that you've had. So hopefully you can sort of, uh, since your brain will still be working then. Um, but we spoke a lot about in the slides about the great thing about learning control is that you can revert changes, right? And we actually haven't done that yet. We haven't, we haven't, um, well, actually, we did one small thing. We did discard a change. So if we reset um, our staging area, actually. But we're going to think, we're going to actually look at what features does GitHub Desktop give us to um, basically what the terminology is to manage commits. So let's go to the history tab. We've got quite a few more commits in here now, which is good. So this is looking a little bit more like what a, sort of an actual real working sort of repository would look like. We've got a few more commits. And I'm going to talk you through some different scenarios of if you've done something and you wanted to change it. Now, I'm going to caveat this with this is a big topic and you're going to get a little sort of introduction to this topic now. But a couple of these, I think, are relatively straightforward. Some of them are a bit more complicated. So let's start with the more straightforward ones. With your last commit, you have a lot of options. With all of the other commits that aren't your last one, you have fewer options to change. So I want everyone to click on the last commit, which for me was added FAQ3 about app. So that should, that should be the change you made to your README file, right? So whatever you change you made, whatever you wrote there, please click on that and it should turn blue. Um, now we're gonna right click. So if everyone can right click, you should have this sort of like menu of options come up and it's gonna give us some options of what we can actually do um, to interact with our last commit. So I'll just make sure everyone can see that. So the first thing we're gonna do is the first thing on this list, which is an amend. Now, amend, we're gonna click it and we're just gonna see what happens, but it basically means if you forgot to do something if you forgot to, um, yeah, make a change. So let's click on that. So we're gonna click amend commit. And then we're gonna go back to, well, it actually, it takes you back to the change it, changes tab. And as you can see, I can now um, decide to edit the text. So uh, this FAQ three is really important for these reasons. You know, you don't have to write this. I'm trying to demonstrate it. Please feel free to follow along if you can, but don't worry if you sort of don't follow along with these last steps, but do feel free to, to sort of um, do what I'm doing if you want. So it's allowing us to, to edit our commit message, our description. For time's sake, I'm not gonna do this, but if we added or edited another file, it would let us do that as well. So let's, we've only ed edited the README, but if we did a di different change here, it would let us do that. So um, it pretty much takes you back to this, this area. So for now, let's just amend the text. Let's just everyone do that, but just know that it can do a few more things than that. But I don't want to spend too long, too long on this one. So let's amend last commit. Let's go back to the history tab and you can see that now, um, you know, I've got, I've got a little extra description here, right? That I didn't have before. So that's great. You can see that it's amended it. It has replaced the previous content. Um, and that's important. You'll see in a minute. Okay. Next option is undoing a commit. These are quite similar. And um, we can talk about that perhaps if we've got a bit more time at the end, but let's just sort of see what it does. And I hope that by seeing what it does, you'll see of uh, the difference between amending and uh, undo, but they are very similar. So let's do exactly like what you did before. You right click, you click undo this time, which is the second option down, at least it is for me. Okay, 
it takes us back to the this one. So this is interesting. Um, it's very similar to amend, but what it's done is it's actually um, the readme file. Um, it's sort of visualizing the changes again. Whereas with undo, sorry, with <laughs> with amend, it amending is like, would you like to add something new? Um, undo, it actually takes you back to this drawing board and you could even discard the changes, you could ignore this file, you could do a lot of things with this file, right? They are conceptually quite similar. Um, so we can add, we can share some notes on that. So I think that let's not do any changes here. I just wanted to show you that it brings you back to this point. Um, and if you wanted to do some changes, you could. Um, uh, but for time's sake, I think let's just um, sort of observe that we're back in this area. We could make some changes to the files. We could, you know, we could do this. Um, okay, let's everyone click, click commit to main now, just to sort of get out of this um, undoing bit. All right. I know this is a lot of terminology, um, but the one thing I wanted to sort of uh, focus on last was revert, because this is a little bit more commonly spoken about as well across different um, ways of using Git. And you'll see that something different happens when we revert. So when you amend and when you undo, it actually rewrites the history. It takes what you've done and it, and it rewrites some things on top of it. Reverting a commit, so reverting changes in commit, I'm not gonna click it just yet, we are going to in a minute. What it does is it keeps your original changes in the history, it does not rewrite anything, but it sort of reverts the change that you did. A lot of, a lot of words there in that sentence, so let's do it and like maybe let's see what, what happens um, and we can refresh these ideas later. Um, so let's say that I didn't like the FAQ3 um, one here, and let's keep it simple with this last one for now. So we can revert changes in commit. So I'm gonna actually um, press that. And the biggest thing to pay attention here is that a new commit has um, been created. So it says revert added FAQ3 about the app. So this is still in the history, but um, a new commit reverting a previous activity we did has been created. And let's just make that a bit more concrete for you and show you that the change did disappear. So, right. Do you know I wrote FAQ3 there? Well, it has disappeared, right? So it's reverted the change, but it hasn't deleted the history of me putting that, that you know, FAQ, FAQ3 there. Um, I hope this makes some sense. I think I wanted to touch upon it, but I can see that there's quite a lot more to say and, and you know, we can, we can come back to these things perhaps in future tutorials. I think though, I don't know, maybe it will break it, I don't know. Let's try and I'm going to revert this one more commit just so you can see that you can do that. And the reason why I want to do, I want to flag one thing before we actually sort of come out of this interactive mode is that it's best to revert commits in the order from newest to oldest. Uh, I think there are some ways you can get around that, but you will have what people call merge conflicts. You'll have, Git will get confused at you if you don't do that. So we just reverted this commit. Let's revert the next one down, right? Which is when we added a fourth sandwich. So sorry, let's take away your fourth sandwich. <laughs> you can add it back in later if you want, if you, if you really wanna have a go. So let's do exactly the same thing we did before. We're gonna right click on this. We don't want this fourth sandwich. We made a mistake, but we want to keep it in the history because it's, it's, it's better to not overwrite the history. So we're gonna do revert changes in this commit, okay? So exactly the same as before. And yay, same thing happens. So as you can see, this is still in the history. It still knows what sandwich we added even, right? It's still got the falafel wrap there that I added, that I apparently had, well, I don't know if it was me actually, someone had it in Paris, it had in Paris. Um, but it's reverted that change. And again, let's just sort of, I keep on clicking on the wrong thing. Let's, um, 
Let's just check. Let's just check it actually has done that. So it has, it's taken off my row. So the latest sort of, um, so where the repository is looking right now, and there's terminology for that, but um, it's sort of latest state, if you like, is um, going to be whatever this sort of commit was. And so it's done that for us. So I just wanted to dwell on that for a moment because I wanted you to understand that when you revert to commit, you do not take it away from the history. You just sort of remove those changes. Um, there's quite a lot more to say on that, but I think I'm going to stop there and we'll sort of go to a few slides to sort of close up because I'm aware that we've got about 10 minutes. Um, and please do ask questions about those things. It would be really interesting to know which out of that, particularly that last section made sense and which didn't make sense. I went through it relatively quickly. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there for now, but please do, please do ask questions about that. It is a little bit confusing, I think. Okay, uh, right, let's see. I'm going to now come out of sort of interactive mode and we'll, we'll sort of, we've got a few final slides to go through, not too many. Okay. Okay. All right, so we've got about 10 minutes left. I'll try not to speak for the whole 10 minutes, maybe more like five, and then um, it will give us time to sort of just, um, uh, yeah, chat and see if there's any questions. But what we decided to do is we started to jump straight in, sort of clicking around and help you see. But now I'm just gonna go over a little bit about some of the terminology and, and you can also reference these slides. So I'm not gonna spend too long on them, but you can reference these slides later. So I'm hoping that some of this is going to start to feel you can link this terminology to the stuff we just did, right? Repo, we actually already went over. Similar to a folder or directory, it's where all of your files are stored for your project. So first, we always have to ask Git to pay attention to our files. And in, in Git language, that's called initializing a repository or Git init. Git will always give us a default branch in which, in which uh, to work in, which is called main. Um, you're going to learn more about branches in, in later lessons, but as you saw, we worked in a branch called main. Moving between branches is a very common thing you'll do with this sort of checkout command. Then we did some, uh, we made some changes um, to files. Um, so, okay, well, this first point is to say that we had a look at that .git report, um, like directory, subdirectory. We found it on our computers. We saw that that's where git um, stores all of the logs of what's going on. Nothing is being automatically tracked. We needed to take snapshots in time. We needed to make save points, if you like. So we, we had to add a file to the staging area, which is basically in Git terms, it's Git add. And then we when we had it in that area, we were able to view how it was different to previous um, uh, versions of that file. As I'm sure hopefully you can see now, this snapshot, this save point in Git language is called a commit. Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, so like pressing the save button. Um, so, and then we always had to write a commit message explaining the motivation for the change we made. It doesn't let you do it else. You always have to write a little small uh, message or a longer one if you like. And then finally, something we quite briefly touched, touched upon, um, but is a little, probably warrants a bit more time. We spent a bit of time looking at the logs um, and I would encourage you to do that a little bit more to look at the history of our repository. We saw that we like these four main features. There was a message, there was time, there's a username, there's a unique ID. Um, using these features, Git basically lets you check out to previous states, reset and revert previously applied changes. So I mean, purposely using specifically Git language here, um, but that's sort of the context of what we did. Okay, so very broad level summary. Um, now, version control allows you to record changes in a set of files over time. It's useful for data management, tracking history, reviewing changes, going back to previous versions. Um, Git is the most widely used version control system. 
You can use it locally, uh, which is what we've been doing today. You can use it via the command line, software extensions in like text editors and R and things like that, or via a Git client, which is what we did today, GitHub Desktop. And GitHub Desktop allows you to interact with Git locally using a GUI, um, but it's really gonna come into its own more when we look at collaboration, which is in the later lessons. I don't know if I should spend too long on this slide. Let me just put it all up and I will sort of briefly point you towards some things. Lots of information on this slide. If you're interested, so we were, we're gonna talk more about best practices. I think we've covered that. All tools have strengths and limitations. GitHub Desktop, I would say in the most general sense, it's one of the most accessible, but it does have some limitations. As you learn Git a bit better, you should maybe explore some other options as well, see what works for your workflow. But for now, it's a really, really great place to start, particularly if you're collaborating. There are some notable limitations of Git, um, particularly if you are using, it's not very good with binary files, basically. Big, large binary files. And I'm more than happy to talk about that a little bit more. But what I've put on this slide is some resources to help. So if you have some large files, if they are binary files, um, actually, it's okay with large files, but if it's a binary file, it can't really track the differences very well or at all. Um, so have a look at these resources and I'm more than happy to chat more about that with people. And then this isn't prep for lesson two. Well, it kind of is. <laughs> to give you some context of what we've done today, we worked locally, you worked with yourself and you use GitHub desktop. Um, in the, in the coming lessons, you will also work locally and remotely. You'll work with yourself and others. You'll use GitHub Desktop and you'll be using github.com. The reason why I put this slide together was because I just want to acknowledge a potential confusion. So we used a tool called GitHub Desktop today. <laughs> it's got the word GitHub in it, but we only used it locally, right? So we didn't actually speak to GitHub. We didn't speak to github.com. So I just wanted to acknowledge that the reason why we started where we did is because we will build towards uh, speaking to github.com, speaking to that remote location um, in later lessons. And this sort of builds you up to that. Um, and so we sort of, we chose a tool that would work across all of the lessons. So you can have a little look at that slide if, if that makes, uh, if that's confusing to people. Um, there are some further resources on these slides, but there is also lots in the HackMD that Irene has shared with you lots on the GitHub repository. They're kind of everywhere. You can't miss them. <laughs> so take a look at all of the, the, those ones. Um, thank you uh, specifically to Irini for um, helping uh, organize this. Obviously, I also stole some of her previous slides, took some inspiration from these places. And also thanks to um, the helpers as well, pa Paolo and um, uh, Vittor as well. So thanks very much for helping out. And thanks for listening. And I think that we will have a few minutes in case people, if we want to come off the recording and, and chat, um, but that's, that's it for now. <laughs>